Wish fulfillment is a classic form of drama going back to the beginning of drama. We were sitting around, I guess, in 1976, when I say we, Aaron and I, and a group from ABC talking about what could be new, a new series. And I guess I'm not a very good poker player because I was staring out the window. And one of the uh, gentlemen from ABC said to me, you don't seem to be very interested in this meeting. I said, well, it's the first week of spring and it's so beautiful out there and you know the green is so green you know, well where would you rather be i said i'd rather be on an island with charlie's angels and there was a pause in the room and someone said perhaps aaron god i wonder if a lot of people would rather be someplace else and that is the way fantasy island started fantasy island it's a wonderful name, a wonderful place. Your idea? I was consulted. And we started talking about this fantasy series where people could indulge their fantasies. Paul Hanley, not so long ago, the most famous hunter in Africa. Hemingway would have loved him. Who is Hemingway? The first script that was written for the first two-hour movie. The first act, the first 20-odd pages, had Mr. Rourke in uh, the United States interviewing people to ascertain their worth as to whether or not they deserve to come to Fantasy Island. The second act began with the seaplane coming in and landing, Rourke and Tattoo standing there, and as the people got off, they would say, Dear guests, I am Mr. Rock, your host. Welcome to Fantasy Island. So, remembering what Francis Ford Coppola said about a script, when you think you really have your script completely tuned and finally honed, start with the second act. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. Company's coming. Smiles. Button your jacket, too. ABC was going to do a film for TV called Fantasy Island, and that it was going to be, it was a two-hour movie, but it was going to be spun off as a weekly series if it worked. And this was the first real fantasy series that Aaron and I did. And we said, look, we're gonna take people to a place called Fantasy Island. Okay, we gotta get them by. We, we thought we should cast in the same direction. In other words, not with a typical leading man, you know, with ironed hair and a, you know, a nice gray eminence. And Aaron was friendly with Ricardo, and Aaron brought up Ricardo. And what he brought us was, A, he was very distinctive. There's nobody like him on television. He has a very commanding presence, and he brings, because of his, the voice, the whole thing, a certain gravitas to it. Ricardo is a very elegant, dignified man, and, and whenever I was around him, you, you, you know, you always wanted to, to to come up to his level, you, you know, to behave yourself and not, you know, he's just as, uh, he's a distinguished, elegant man. Another day, another dollar, hmm, boss? Oh, but you always be so mercenary, Tattoo. I thought we decided to try to cultivate our finer instincts today, didn't we? Yes, but I changed my mind. What? Today I decide to be selfish. So here we had Ricardo, this distinguished presence, and who was going to be um, Tattoo? And again, we thought we got to think outside the box, although in those days there was no expression outside the box. 
We just thought we had to keep going away from what would be acceptable. Hervé had gotten a role in a film with um, um, Henry Winkler. It was a, he played, Henry Winkler was a boxer, and Hervé, I think, was his manager. He had had that, and then he'd been in one of the, one of the MGM films. Um, it was Man with a Golden Gun. It was a Sean Connery film. We had both seen the Bond film that Hervé was in, and we thought we'd take a shot with him. Uh-huh. Uh, do try not to get in the way, will you, Tattoo? <laughs> then we did the first Fantasy Island movie, but it was a rather dark, dark piece. Welcome to Fantasy Island, indeed. So the network looked at it and said, you know, we really think we have something here, but does it have to be so dark? This was in the 70s, and um, they wanted, they just thought it would be too dark and too frightening for the audience. They wanted to make it lighter. Of course, we were attempting to do something different and, you know, so with meaning. But we were quickly convinced that we could do it lighter. Well, it seems we're still determined to be the Henny Youngman of Fantasy Island, huh? No, I'd rather be Groucho. At least he had more fun with the ladies. Indeed. In Fantasy Island wasn't a comedy, but we needed those light moments to offset the other story uh, uh, in the show. But a lot of writers like working on it because if they had this unusual idea and it was only a three-beat story, that was enough for us. What it was was I had been doing Starsky and Hutch, a lot of Starsky's and Hutch's, and Mike Fisher, who was the producer of Starsky and Hutch, became the producer of Fantasy Island. And he said, do you want to do Fantasy Island? And I said, yes, because I had a lot of people to support. I think we did the story of I want to be attractive to women, or a woman saying, I want to be attractive to men. I think we did that 38 times in the course of the five years. And those were those light stories. And uh, Ron was very, very helpful because of his comedy background. Aaron was a guy who understood what the process of writing was about. Leonard understood that too. And it is a process. It's not like ordering a corned beef sandwich at Nate and Al's Delicatessen. You know, you can say, uh, take out the pickle, give me another slice, I don't like that, change the bread. You can't change the bread, the pickle, or the lettuce in a script without turning something into something else. They understood how it happens, and they were appreciative. Oh, I think the count is looking at me. Uh, the um, background stories we have discreetly spread about you are that uh, you are both heiresses. Um, your money came from uh, oil, Miss Dowd. Uh, Miss Bender, your fortune came from shipping. How exciting! I always did love sailors. <laughs> and an anthology is very hard to be successful with on television because you're introducing new characters every week and it's really their story. Fortunately, in Ricardo and Hervé, we had two such commanding presences that were there every week and they became so popular and uh, that they gave us some continuity but then we we decided we would do two stories every week so not only were we doing an anthology we we're doing two stories that and we decided never to connect the stories well, one of the things you had to be aware of as a writer was that there were going to be departures from the story as it was ongoing, a sort of segue to get to the other story. And since the character of Mr. Rourke often interacted in one or both stories, it was necessary to create the kind of crossover or activity, sometimes a conversation with Tattoo, that will enable uh, the pacing between the two different shows to seem right and keep the thing, the kettle boiling. They could have been killed. Need I remind you, Tattoo, there are no guarantees on Fantasy Island. Our guests take their chances. My boss, that's not good for business. We were an independent company. We weren't backed by anybody. Um, 
And so we tried to build a group of people who we were comfortable with, who were comfortable with us, who knew that we couldn't go into huge deficits, but we wanted a quality product on the screen. I'd been working for uh, Len Goldberg and Aaron Spelling for a while, and uh, I guess it just seemed to be uh, unnatural to go over to do the show. You know, they all want you to come over and do one. I was there for five years. Cliff Bowl, like a lot of the directors who did multiple episodes on television, is underrated as an artist, and he was and is an artist. It was a series that was a joy to do, strictly because, even but with the name Fantasy Island. It was a fantasy for the directors, or at least this director. There is a great deal of scenic beauty to be photographed on Fantasy Island. I'm not into scenery, boss. I'm mostly into people. That's why that. We shot the movies in um, a lot of it in Hawaii, and we were able to use the opening of the seaplane, which is coming in over Hawaii, but we couldn't go back. We couldn't afford to go back. Eventually, we wound up building on the Columbia lot the dock and uh, some of Fantasy Island, so when the seaplane comes in to tie up to the dock, that's on the Columbia lot out in the valley, and they greet the people out on the Columbia lot. It was a, a tough show from a standpoint of, because each week was a, was a different place, you, know, you met on Fantasy Island, and then all of a sudden you could be in the desert or uh, some odd location somewhere. Ours is an anthology, and every week we were going someplace else so we had to be careful of the budget and yet give the audience if we said we were going back um, or forward to the future we had to be able to deliver at least a facsimile of the future so from a production point of view it was by far our most difficult our most expensive show to do because it changed every week and and it was a logistic nightmare Oh, cheer up the two, cheer up. As you say, no one can bat a thousand. Well, it's fun trying. People live lives of quiet desperation. I don't believe quiet desperation. I believe in noisy desperation. And the, the urge is to see if there were some way for a second chance, some way to make it better, some way to take the road not taken that may have given the brighter horizon. We, we all hope for that. And we all would like to be given a second shot or another shot or just a shot that does not involve tetanus. So, hey, wish fulfillment, very powerful. Fantasy Island took them every Saturday night away and they had a very nice hour living out their dreams. I mean, people, still come up to me, and not only in America, but around the world, and will say, you know, I always had this fantasy of, and I, I you know, you never did that one on television. So it's, it's still there with people. It's still there. You know, boss, I like stories with a happy ending. It seems to me that today on Fantasy Island, more than one fantasy has had a happy ending. Thank God. Indeed.